I hope that you enjoy this video that's coming up. During this video, I'm trying to move along as fast as possible. In my head, I have it like it's a race against the clock because I know it's gonna take a lot of time to go over these menu options. But just keep in mind that if you're watching this and you own a different receiver that's not an Akio, or you potentially own an, uh, an Akio that came out years ago that's an older Akio, a lot of stuff that's going to uh, go on in this video it probably pertains because with receivers from one manufacturer to another, there are many things that have to be similar. Okay, so there's many setup things from one receiver brand to another receiver brand that are going to be similar because it has to function with the surround sound format. So just keep that in mind and enjoy the video. I'm gonna go over some of these menu options with you. Now I don't really have to have a full grasp on everything because I don't use it but this will definitely get you started if you're new to it. I don't ever use the um, auto calibrating microphones that come with receivers. A lot of times they set things wrong. In the past I've tried them um, but I, I always went back to setting everything myself. I just find it to be the most accurate. So let's talk about it. So TV app OSD. This is the first one. So Here's your Dolby Vision, but I do want to come over here. Now, if this was turned off, the Zone 2 HDMI was turned off, it changes your HDMI output, okay? On the back of this receiver, there's a main and there's a sub output, which is actually, it's also on the back of this older Akio receiver. There's, there's a HDMI out, which is your sub, and then there's your main. So the main is the one that's going to be hooked up to the TV. This is the one that has the arc as well. So the arc is going to take the audio and also send it back to your TV. So you want to have it hooked up to that main one. But over here there are um, options for it. So main is the one I'm sending it to. 1080p 4K upscaling. I don't use this because uh, the Blu-ray player that I have automatically does that and a lot of times receivers don't do it very well maybe this one will i don't know uh, I'm, i've never uh, done a test for it but anyway it's off so the zone two i actually am using it so i'm going to turn it back on the language that's pretty self-explanatory so the so the on-screen display is something that you'll see um when you hit the the information by this little eye over here. So when you hit this button, when you're watching something, it, it, it puts information on the screen. So what you want to do is you want to set that to on, otherwise it's off. I don't see why you wouldn't want it. It's pretty important. The mini OSD screen, I just keep it to auto off, otherwise it's always on. Of, of course, you know, I don't want to see it all the time. So I'm going to go back. Um, I think that that was a uh, yeah, screen saver. I have the screen saver set to 10 minutes. So I set to 10 minutes. The next thing is the HDMI input. This is where you can assign the HDMIs. Okay, so you see here's a six one uh, that I didn't even have set. So you could pretty much change them. So right now I have it the same way that the manufacturer had it set. Um, because I want to see, for example, Streambox on the back of the receiver, it's labeled as Streambox as well. So I want to have the front display matching the inputs on the rear. So I, I leave it as is, you know, I'm very happy with it. Um, let me go back. Okay, so video input. Okay, this is where you can add things like the component video or the composite, which is pretty much these. You're just changing these around a little bit, put some light on it. So you're just assigning these to the various inputs. Okay, so I'm not using any of them. So pretty much these really just need to be turned off. I shut this shut this flashlight off okay so i'm not using these so you know there's no reason to even have them on digital audio out so this is where your optical and your coaxial which are 
going back to this, there's one over here on the side, there's your opticals, and there's your coaxial. Again, all that's being done is it's being assigned to the particular input on the receiver. I'm not using these, so they just happen to be set where they are. Nothing special there. <clears throat> Analog audio input, that's the left and right. Um, you know, you could set it wherever. I just left it right there. Okay, so speaker, so configuration, this is probably one of the big ones over here, or, or probably the biggest. Up top here where it says speaker channels, this is where you change, excuse me, where you change the configuration. Okay, so depending on your room and your setup, just keep pressing the remote and it'll keep changing them. So I have 5.1.4 going in this room. Subwoofer, if you have a powered sub, you see it adds it or takes it away. Your front highs, you can change them. And the same with the height two speaker for the rear, depending on the type of heights you have, it's just being moved around. So back to the front high, excuse me, the front highs that I have. Um, zone two, zone two on and off. That's that little thing down there. I'm currently playing around with the zone two, so I have it on. <clears throat> the zone two is for a separate room, by the way, and I do have a separate video for it, so check it out. Now the crossover setting, um, the, the front speakers that I have are a large speaker. With that said, make sure that a large speaker really goes down in the base, that it's, it's really digging down into the um, 30 hertz range or the 20 hertz range. Um, a large speaker, just because it's big, if the cutoff point is around 45 hertz, then it's a, probably a good idea to set this to small and send some of the bass to the subwoofer. <clears throat> or there's another option over here with the double bass, I'm gonna to get to that. Now this is the crossover. So the center channel, which is this one over here, the SBS Ultra, um, I've been running it at 70 hertz. I think that's um, um, appropriate for this um, center channel. Uh, 60 hertz is fine as well. Um, with the uh, test CD, this, um, center channel does go pretty low, so. <coughs> Gotta get some water. So this is the, um, the height channel. As you can see, it's in blue, and I have that right now set to 80 hertz, and the rear heights are set to 60. And the surrounds are set to 80 which needs to change, because actually it changed because I flipped over the speaker configurations. That needs to go to full band. So at any time that you come over here on this receiver and you change your configuration, it, it, it does change the crossover. Okay, so the low pass filter for the subwoofer, okay, this can be put to 120, 190. All this is doing is it's cutting off the amount of frequencies that it's sending to the subwoofer. Typically, this is a setting that you really just want set to off. Putting it on is gonna limit the frequencies that is going to the sub. Double bass, by turning this on, it's gonna put more bass into the subwoofer and typically what it does is it's also putting bass into the main speakers. Turning this on is usually not a good idea because it makes for muddy sounding bass most of the time. If you have good equipment or equipment that is um, uh, pretty well balanced, then this typically should be set to off. So I just keep it off. Um, there's really no reason to have it on, uh, at least with or the system setup that I have. So here's your distance now. For your distance, find yourself a tape measure and measure how far it is from your couch. For example, from the couch to the right speaker that's in blue, it's 12 feet. And then it goes through the height one, the height, uh, the height one left, the height one right, 
I too left all that. Um, so it's very important to set the distance. So make sure that you do that. Level calibration, this is gonna get loud. Hold on, it's gonna get loud. So this is where you set the volume for each speaker. Okay, so that's the volume, it's very important as well. Make sure that you spend some time and you set it. Equalizer setting. <clears throat> this is the place to set your EQ. So for example, uh, the center channel, if you needed some more bass at 25 hertz, you'd come over here and, and, and increase the bass. If you wanted more treble at 16 kilohertz, you could increase the treble. <clears throat> I don't use EQs because the whole idea is to purchase equipment that you know doesn't need EQs. So always find yourself the best speaker that's in the budget that does not need an EQ. If it does need an EQ, then you know it really should be used in a very small, small amount. And what I mean is, <clears throat> for example, let's say the treble wasn't so good. So you purchase this speaker and you're coming over here and you're like, I gotta increase this, I gotta increase this, <laughs> you know, this gotta go all the way up. Um, you know, that's not something that you want to do. That's a terrible speaker. Don't buy it, get rid of it, send it back. That's my advice. Because also when you increase that, you know, the amp isn't going to play as clean at louder volumes for those frequencies. So, yeah, I don't use any equalizer. It's all off. Um, if if this was a 7.1.2 or so, the surround backs would be um, lit up. Okay, so THX Audio. <clears throat> THX Audio is only for receivers that have the THX processing. Okay, so if this if the subwoofer was a THX subwoofer, this could be turned on or off. It does have loudness plus oops what did i just do it does have the loudness plus which is really awesome for um when the volume is low it, it keeps everything very well balanced although i find with the latest formats from uh, dts and uh, adobe you know this thx really isn't as needed as it was say before those formats I should point out that I believe, yeah, see over here the back speaker spacing, it's grayed out. Um, that turns on with a 7.1 setup or 7.1.2, and it's going to give you an option for the spacing. Like it'll say if it's less than four feet or uh, greater than four feet. The speaker virtualizer. I have not seen any modes that this works with. Maybe if I only had two speakers hooked up, then this would work and it would bring me some modes where it's gonna make like fake sounding speakers. Um, but I mean, I haven't seen it. So anyway, it's on, but I guess it doesn't matter if it's off because again, you know, I mean, I haven't seen anything like that pop up. So uh, the multiplex input channel, so mono input. So basically the mono is either gonna be playing through the front left, the front right, or both. All right, so you could set it just, you know, how mono is gonna play. <clears throat> Let me see something over here in the main sub. So multiplex, it says that it, it determines which audio channels or languages from multiplex sources such as multilingual TV broadcast. So you could set this to your preference, left or right. And I think some of them have like, yeah, left or right or center. Um, <clears throat> Dolby, loudness management. So this is pretty much like the same concept as THX that Dolby has now. When the volume is low, you could still hear the sub and and um, 
uh, the explosions and the surround sound well compared to years ago where it, it, it would vanish overall. Center spread, let me see if I turn this off, the center spread work, no, center spread is just totally grayed out. DTS and IMAX. So IMAX is, it's, it's a format that is on top of the DTS signal, okay? So your receiver is gonna output the DTS yeah, excuse me, your source is going to output a DTS signal and the IMAX is going to be on top of it. So it's kind of like a Dolby signal, but the Atmos layer is on top of it. So that's kind of what the IMAX is like. Um, there's really not too much that has IMAX. There's a few Blu-rays, uh, 4K uh, uh, Blu-rays, but they're like 30 minutes or 45 minutes and it's the kind of shows that you see in like a aquarium like the, that type of a like an aquarium type of movie um so the odds of you coming into contact with imax content is pretty slim unless if you buy those and i mean i think there's like five of them <laughs> i did test some of them out uh, I can't suggest purchasing them unless if you just wanted to, um, you know, test out the equipment. They're way too short for like spending $25 for like 30 minutes or so. But the sound was good. Um, one of them, the sound was good. The other one, the sound was, was okay. Nothing too special. Anyway, here's IMAX mode. You can set it to on, you can set it to off. Auto, I mean, that's pretty much where I keep it. Keep it set to auto. And then you can set the base levels and stuff like that. So here's the LFE level, this is your sub. Over here you can adjust the, um, uh, the uh, low frequency effect. Okay, you could adjust it. You're better off just leaving it alone. You probably won't even need to use that. And here's the volume. Okay, so depending on how it's gonna Depending on uh, how it's going to show up on the front display, um, absolute is the one that I keep it at. Um, the maximum volume, you know, that's nice to set. The, the maximum volume is great to set, especially if, if by some chance you have children, you know, then you could stop them from just coming over to it and cranking it all the way up so you could put a cap on it. Um, you know, I, I don't really see any reason for it. Uh, you know, for me, but I, you know, I guess I could set it, say, for somewhere like around, uh, you know, 70 or something like that, just in case if, I don't know, it, it, it went off on its own, or I leaned on the remote, you know, but otherwise, you know, I don't really see any um, reason for it. Um, the power on volume, it has minimum, and then you could set, you know, you could set the volume that you want the receiver to turn on. Okay, but I don't, I don't, I don't use that. That's minimum. I use last. So what last is? It's the last volume that the receiver was at before it was turned off. And here's your headphone level. That's something that you could set as well. Let's see. Let's go to source. Okay, input volume. Um, I forgot why this is set. Oh, this I believe, I don't know why this is set to 34. Or did I just cause that because I changed something else, my input volume. Don't remember, I'm gonna have to look at that again. But I remember, okay, so name, edit, Roku, okay. So, I, oh, I could edit what's connected. I didn't even know that. Customize names for each input selector, select okay. Register the new name. Or did I start doing that and I didn't do it because I thought it was not practical. Um, so audio select, HDMI or analog. You know, it just depends on what's hooked up. So when it's set to HDMI, um, PCM fix mode could be used. And that's only if there's a problem with the signal. My input volume.
Okay, so we're in hardware now. So HDMI. Um, so this setting, this setting with an on and off, this this allows you to control other devices through the HDMI. Um, a, a lot of things have that sort of thing these days, like TVs. Um, I think the Roku has a setting that I could turn on and off. That if, for example, if you turn off the TV, it'll turn off the receiver, or if you if you turn on the receiver, it'll turn on the TV. Um, so the HDMI uh, st standby through pass, what that's doing is it's allowing the receiver to still acquire, oh, it's thundering out there, um, to still play whatever you're currently watching. So let's just say you're watching something on a Roku or an Amazon uh, what is it, fire stick or whatever it is, and you decide to turn off the receiver, it's gonna send the signal through the receiver and it's gonna send it back to the TV. So in this case, I have it set to uh, the Eco Mode Auto, that seems to work well. And here's the audio return channel for the, um, for the ARC. So you want that on as well. And the auto lip sync that's set to on. And I don't know what's the difference whether it's on or off, I've tried it. Um, here's the network settings, here's the Bluetooth, on, off, um, pairing information, power management, um, your sleep timer, if you wanted to go to sleep with it, auto standby, have it on, auto standby and HDMI, standby through. So again, you know, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna turn itself off. I think that setting some of these, like coming over here and turning this off, I think that that's a bad idea because what happens those days when you know, I forget and I, I leave on the receiver. It doesn't happen too often, but occasionally something comes up and I'm listening to music and the music stops and I forget that I didn't come over to the receiver to turn it off. So I have come back sometimes hours later and been like, oh boy, you know, the, the, you know, the receiver's on after the music stopped. So it's a good idea to have all that stuff um, turned on. Um, the USB power out at standby okay um that's gonna send power to the usb port and you know that's something that you might want to decide whether you want that on or off it can be good if you were hooking up like a usb external fan to put on top of the receiver this receiver does have a fan built into it um i have one of those usb fans on the other receiver to keep it cool but this one seems pretty good with the fan that's built in. I may pick up a USB in the future for it. They're not very expensive, they're like $10. And they usually have like three speeds. Um, the 12 volt trigger, I have that set to off. Works with Sonos. Um, so if you have it, uh, you know, here's the settings for it. Okay, so let's go to multi-zone. So here's your zone two. Okay, right now I have it set to variable that means i could change the volume on it otherwise you could set it to fixed fixed would be more so if um if the other room has its own receiver uh you know then you would set this to fixed probably okay so remote play zone zone two auto main those are your options Miscellaneous, tuner, remote ID, you can change the remote ID. There's a few options, it'll change the um, ID so it's not interfering. Firmware update, make sure that you know you do this when you get the receiver. I would, I would definitely suggest to do this as soon as you get the receiver in case if by some free chance the firmware update messes it up, you could at least get rid of the receiver. <laughs> um, but I have done these updates, these Ankyo updates on, on the older receiver over here, which is the, uh, the RZ630. Um, fortunately, it's never messed it up, but you'll just come over here and then you'll like usually click on this or whatever and 
and you'll say to update via NAT or you can update it via USB. I've always been doing the NAT, it seems to work well. Initial setup, um, you know, if you want to reset the receiver, Okay, let me go, where is it? Okay, so lock. And this is, with this setting, um, it's good because if you don't want to accidentally change your own settings and you entered in here, you could just lock it. And here's factory reset. I'm not going anywhere near it because I don't want to reset the receiver. And that's pretty much it. The only other menu option would be over here with the quick menu. And that brings this up. So it has different um, options you could turn on or off. Like this is the audio return channel. That's the arc and it's sending audio to the TV as well. So if you don't want that, you could shut it off. Um, the music op optimizer, this is for listening to things like Spotify or other MP3s. It kind of makes it sound better. It's more like it's more like a loudness feature. Like years ago, most receivers had a loudness button, and you press that loudness button, and it just kind of made it sound better. It it it, it gave the, the treble a boost, and it gave the bass a boost. To me, that's what it sounds like. It's just it kind of makes it more clear. Um, I mean, I don't use it as you can see. It's set to off. Stereo assign. This is another really cool feature. Any of the speakers that are hooked up, if you want to listen to the, um, excuse me, if you want to use the other speakers to listen to music, I need a sip of water. If you want to use the other speakers to listen to music, you can right here. And this feature has me thinking about potentially using a pair of speakers for the rear that's a speaker that I enjoy for music. And then I could come over here when the receiver set the stereo and it'll play out of those speakers. So for example, the surrounds. But as of right now, it's set to um, the front um, highs. Excuse me. As of right now, it's, it's set to the front. Okay, so the, so the manual EQ, you could come over here and you could turn on your presets. I showed you the EQ earlier on, but this is where you turn them on and off. And then as you can see, I keep it off. Um, the accurate EQ, that's with the, um, the, uh, the uh, microphone that comes with the receiver. Re-EQ, that's for THX. So if you're watching a THX movie and when it's playing and you come over here, it'll activate this and you can turn it on and off. I typically like it better off. But it, well, what it really does is it takes away some of the brightness from the movies, which supposedly most of the movies, I don't know if the mix is exactly like that anymore, but going back years ago, back to the days of like uh, the uh, DVDs and you know that time, they would say that the 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 mix is made for a large movie theater, so the treble is, is higher. Um, I mean, I always I thought that it sounded better with the, with, with the um, re-EQ off. That's the point. Now over here, you can come over here and you can change your front, your center, and your subwoofer. Um, I mean, I just leave it alone. It's the same settings that were done back in the um, volume leveling, which was right, let me go, which was right here in the level calibration. This is where it's going to get loud in two, one. So it's the same. Okay, but that's another way to make an adjustment. And that's really good if, you know, you're sitting back watching the movie and thinking maybe it needs a little bit, maybe the center channel needs to be a little bit louder. To be honest, I really never use it. I think I tried it, I think I used it one time. Um, but if, if the speakers are, speakers that are good speakers and they're clear speakers and the level is set correctly, 
that's not something that you know you'll ever use.